on this peninsula, a stunning thing happens. A migration of 2,000 miles waits here for favorable winds to cross 30 miles of open water. After migrating for a while, the migration that waits here joins other migration paths in central Texas and eventually ends up in the Sierra Madres and continues to 12 mountain ranges in Mexico and Michoacan. And the monarchs weigh as much as a paperclip and they're the only two-way migrating butterfly in existence. And this peninsula is home to some of those generations. We are at the Peninsula Point Lighthouse on the Stonington Peninsula. I'm Chuck. I'm Poppins. The channel's Restless Viking. Let's learn about this migration. So in the fall, thousands of monarchs can be seen here waiting to migrate for favorable conditions to cross that way to Wisconsin. So apparently the shorter days and the cooler nights are a signal to the monarch to start heading south to Mexico. And they funnel down the Stonington Peninsula until they reach this point. But then they have a long journey across the water to get to Door County in Wisconsin. So they hang out in trees and unfortunately we've gotten here after a few days of north wind which is probably a favorable wind to push them south into Wisconsin. Now we have a south wind that's pushing back north. And I'm afraid we may not see many hanging in the trees. But when they do, there's thousands of them hanging in the trees here at the tip of the peninsula. And although this lighthouse has been here since 1865, we're not gonna talk about it much because we're here for the monarchs. This used to be where the keeper's quarters were but uh, I think it caught on fire in the 50s and then in the uh, Forest Service was in charge. So they just bulldozed it down and left just the tower. The cedar trees here at the peninsula protect the monarchs as they rest in what's called roosting trees for the journey across the water. From mid-August to mid-September, Wildlife Unlimited volunteers come here daily and check the numbers of monarchs. They've also planted a lot of milkweed along the shoreline. That's the only plant that the monarch responds to and lays their eggs on. So monarchs have a life cycle of two to six weeks. During that time, they mate, the female lays eggs. But this time of year, the last generation does not become reproductive. And they're said to be in what's called reproductive diapause. And this is the generation that begins the 2,000 mile journey to Mexico. And they head to Mexico, a place they've never been before. So they hang out in their specific places in Mexico as their wintering home in the Sierra Madres, about 2,000 feet above sea level. And today we're not having a lot of luck finding any monarchs in the cedar trees because the, the three or four days before today, the wind was pushing from the north to the south, which would have been their favorable wind. So they all probably got up and took off. We've seen a couple monarchs so far but not many. So then those monarchs that left here and went to Mexico and they kind of hang out and then they become reproductive in January to February. And this generation, unlike the others, lives eight to nine months. And so by the time they decide to leave Mexico and come back north in the spring, two to three generations journey back. And it's amazing because those generations have no experience in this migration. They just pick up where they left off and they had to the same landmarks and they take the same route and they all go to the same part up here that they started at but they don't even have google maps and then in mid-may the monarchs arrive back here but they're the third to fourth generation of the ones that left and as these monarchs come north they find milkweed plants and they start laying eggs creating more generations to fly north Peninsula Point is also an important migratory bird route as well as monarch butterfly route because of the short distance from the point to Wisconsin. Yep, the eggs are laid on the underside and then when the caterpillar hatches, it is just microbial. It's tiny and it starts to munch on the leaves. This is the only plant that it eats. 
So here's the evidence we have of the monarchs here, even though we've only seen a couple. Because most likely, the schedule said that they departed a couple days ago. And I'm not sure where the wind schedule is, but I'm sure it's posted in some kind of uh, train station for monarchs somewhere, or airport. So then the monarchs spend their time here in northern Michigan and the UP throughout Canada. And then as August comes around, generations come back. And by the time this whole life cycle is done, there's been a couple dozen generations. And the monarchs seem to like to roost in the cedar trees. So for years, Poppins studied monarchs and she hatched a bunch and spent time allowing them to grow so that her classroom could learn about them. And she was always interested in, in monarchs, but I was not because I have a fear of butterflies. They land on you and they taste you with this big proboscis, which is disgusting to me. So, but anyways, you take your point, of course, the monarch migration is really a wonder of nature and Stonington, the Peninsula Point Lighthouse in the Stonington Peninsula, if you're lucky, is a great time to see them. I'm Chuck. I'm Poppins. Thanks for listening to me and Poppins. Oh, that's a, that is a monarch. That's a monarch. One.